Hampton. I'm the Fast CD product manager at Qualcomm, and uh, uh, we'll try and introduce you guys to uh, our Fast CD uh, computer vision <coughs> library that accelerates applications on mobile devices that are uh, looking to basically enable computer vision type uh, functionality. So, what do I mean by computer vision uh, use cases? A lot of folks in this uh, room probably have different ideas, but what we're specifically interested in is computer vision use cases that are relevant to mobile users and can run on um, uh, memory bandwidth constraint platforms like handsets. So in this case, many of you may be familiar with these, I'll just go through them quickly. Augmented reality is where you actually supplement essentially camera images with additional information to augment the information. We look at FastCD as being an underlying acceleration library. Uh, that will allow that to occur, you know, even more uh, efficiently in terms of both power and performance. Gestures, uh, accelerating gesture recognition uh, and the way people might use physical gestures of their device to essentially, in, you know, tell an application something. That's another one. Face recognition, text recognition, pretty straightforward. Depth mapping for stereotype cameras uh, is something we're looking at. Uh, accelerating that functionality and image stabilization is up there as an example of an image processing functionality that's within our fast CD library that um, we look to basically accelerate um, so let me uh, move along and uh, try and get through this uh, rather long deck in a relatively short amount of time so um, again we're focused on mobile it's a, uh, uh, a library that is looking to hardware accelerate essentially some of these functions within our library. Uh, on, on Qualcomm hardware, we're going to use the, uh, I'll get to it later, uh, but we're going to use our application processor, our Neon SIMD engine, our DSP, and GPU over time. So these are uh, essentially the hardware processing units that we're looking to accelerate some of our CV functionality with. So I'll spend a couple minutes on this slide just because I want to clearly articulate essentially the architecture. At the very top in this green um, uh, horizontal row, we've got essentially the applications uh, that we're looking to enable with FastCV. We could do this either directly, there's no direct link between the apps. If you have very sophisticated application developers, they might be able to take the functions that exist within our FastCV library directly and, and directly write applications, but it would require a degree of sophistication on the part of the developer that is rare. So we're looking at leveraging essentially middleware libraries, this uh, uh, second from the top uh, orange row, uh, and, and we have an example of that in the Qualcomm Augmented Reality SDK that's available for app developers to utilize. We actually today accelerate that using our FastCV library. And so underneath that, and the FastCV for Snapdragon and FastCV for ARM, what I want to make clear is we have two implementations of the same uh, uh, FastCV library. One. It's a reference implementation, FastCV for ARM. It will run on any ARM platform or ARM processor. It will use uh, basically just uh, an ARM processor. There's no additional acceleration. What's interesting about that, and you'll see it at the very end of this slide, and will show real value to doing just FastCV for ARM, is um, the code is sufficiently well written for handset and mobile devices that you see a significant improvement over OpenCV, for example. FastCV for Snapdragon expands upon that for Qualcomm specific chipsets. And like I was saying earlier, we use our additional hardware uh, processing units on our SSC to help additionally augment the, the performance for FastCV for Snapdragon. And so at the bottom, you just have uh, the various hardware units that we provide. Hexagon is a DSP, video cores, uh, app processors, and, and, and the like. So uh, the sound is fluctuating, so I apologize. Um, but we have these various feature groupings for uh, our library, and if you want more information on any of these, they're available on developer.qualcom.com slash fastcv. You can actually get very detailed information on every one of the functions. They're grouped in this particular way, and uh, you can get the nth level of detail on, on each one of these. But I'll go through it relatively quickly here. So again, this is just expanding on the fact that FastCV for ARM just uses the, the app's processor and Snapdragon takes advantage of both uh, of all the different uh, processors on our ARM chipset. 
So where we fit in right now, many of you are aware of OpenCV. OpenCV is an incumbent library that has a very large uh, set of function functionality. We look at like uh, the Kronos Working Group and we're anxious to work with them to help uh, create essentially a hardware acceleration layer that is essentially optimized in our view for mobile. It'd be great to have that capability such that you can actually implement some of these CD functions or use cases on mobile platforms. And we think that hardware acceleration is, is somewhat necessary for that. So we have our fast CD for ARM on the lower left orange box as a reference implementation. And then we're open to having um, a common API at the hardware acceleration API layer that various hardware specific implementations could write to. And so that's kind of what we were thinking there. This is again, just so in case anybody didn't quite catch it, this is where we've got much more information if uh, you don't certainly get to it in this, in this presentation. So the next section of this presentation is to go in and have a look at some of the areas in these feature groupings that we were looking at and explain the, the, the actual uh, library in a little bit more detail. So given that this is a technical audience, uh, I'll go through it uh, maybe more than I would to a marketing group, but I think that you'll still find it very high level. So um, it's C, C++ function calls. Uh, we try to make sure that the uh, memory is at 128-bit aligned. Um, we end up having a very flat architecture in the actual library. It's uh, thread safe and we have separate functions for different argument types, so whether it's signed, unsigned, of various lengths. The API flow is extremely simple. You set a mode, uh, you either select, you're optimizing for performance, minimize power consumption, or offload from the CPU. Those are basically the three modes. Once you've set that, you can use any of the functions that are in the library, and then we handle cleanup with some memory uh, uh, sort of memory care routines that we've got in here. So this is the set operation mode functionality, and you can see the, the, the type def there that basically explains how we have, have those three modes that I just articulated. And uh, the memory management, it's FCB mem alloc, so it basically allocates memory in a very um, aligned manner that's friendly to a lot of the functions that are, you're gonna be using. Um, You've also got a few macros in there and a, a pyramid allocation functionality so that you can actually set up memory for some of the pyra pyramid type of data types that are valuable in computer vision. Uh, we have an FCD assert and uh, it actually doesn't uh, completely exit. You actually just print, an exit, uh, print a warning to the Andro Android log um, and this is useful for debugging your applications in, in, in in a, a reasonable way, and you'd typically be able to remove it in production code. Um, so there are, like I said, eight different groups that we've organized the library into. Um, again, they're very much tailored to CV. Uh, they're primitive building block functions that are tailored to CV applications. And we won't go through all of them uh, here today, but just to give you a flavor of what some of them might look like, we'll go through the uh, vector operations, the image processing, uh, feature detect and time allowing, maybe 3D reconstruction, just to give you an idea of what's going on. Um, so for vector operations, we have a number of different dot product functionalities where you take the dot product of two, in the first yellow circle, you know, 36 byte vectors, and you can also do a dot product of 36 byte vector against four other vectors, uh, four others. It's um, a way to basically make the most use in some cases of some of the uh, 128-bit uh, uh, SIMD engine that we had in there, and, and so um, you'll see some of these numbers are, are use, carefully chosen for both computer vision uses and also taking into consideration the actual hardware constraints of a lot of mobile platforms. So in addition to just straight up dot products of vectors, we've got a dot product of patches. And so this is particularly valuable. So you take a patch of an eight by eight uh, square and, and you can actually uh, take that dot product along a line of pixels within an image. And that's pretty valuable uh, for certain applications. But again, these are relatively low level. In image processing, we actually have a number of blurring or, or filtering functions that uh, are of varying sizes. You've got median filtering and Gaussian filtering as well that 
um, are, are pretty useful. Um, edge filtering is, is also provided, so we've got Sobel and, and Canny Edge Detection, and, and those are kind of, like, a, I guess you're getting the idea that if, if a developer was to basically use these functions directly, they'd need to be a CV expert, and hence, what I want to make clear with this sort of going into the details of these functions, these are typically most valuable for middleware developers, like I was referring to on that stack diagram that we looked at earlier. You want to be able to create something like the QCAR SDK middleware library that can utilize the FastCV uh, functions and do so in an efficient way and essentially abstract that away from the end app developer that's more interested in, in user level functionality. So, Image processing, we have many uh, you know, finite impulse response filters that are both, um, uh, they provide correlation with separable and, and non-separable uh, kernels of, of different sort of sizes. So you can do three by three all the way up to 17 by 17 correlation uh, calculations. These things are getting done repetitively in a lot of CV apps, and so making these base primitive functions extremely efficient is one of the real value adds that FastCV brings to bear. So it's, it's actually quite uh, an efficient uh, library that we'll, we'll demonstrate with the, the performance deck at the end, or a slide at the end, we'll show you that. Um, in image processing, uh, for Viola Jones algorithms that you might be familiar with, a lot of these summed area table uh, uh, functions are particularly relevant. And again, these are over a, a variety of, of sizes. and. Uh, we actually do handle uh, the unique case where in memory you've got contiguous uh, memory. Uh, you can actually essentially do uh, an integration over a, a straight line in memory and actually get uh, some significant performance uh, benefits in that particular uh, function. So it's the second yellow from the bottom, that FCV integrate image line. That, that's the one I was referring to and it's actually a particularly valuable one in some of the applications like uh, gesture recognition. So um, what's valuable in a lot of augmented reality use cases is feature detection and tracking. And so um, you know, feature detection at a very base level is, is provided in our FastCV library. We do not aggregate this. Uh, that's left up to those middleware libraries to be able to provide that kind of feature detect and tracking functionality that an augmented reality app would need. But again, our Qualcomm augmented reality library or middleware library takes advantage of FastCV to implement its uh, feature detect and tracking algorithms very effectively. So this Fast9 detect is one example of that, and we've got, um, uh, you basically can do it in uh, Fast9 uh, corners from the image. You can do it in a masked way, so essentially you set in regions within the image and you basically mark it with a one, and then you only do Fast9 corner detect on that region. That's sort of called masking, and then you can do essentially uh, fast nine corner detect and scoring simultaneously in some of these later functions. So I'll skip the 3D uh, reconstruction one just because some of these things are, you know, you have to be specific to the CV domain to be particularly interested. But um, what I wanted to make clear is we do have some very basic uh, data structures that are used repeatedly through a number of these uh, uh, functions. Uh, FCV correspondences are used in some of those, actually, uh, I'll go back to it, um, 3D reconstruction, and so you can see there that we're using this data structure, FCV correspondences, quite a bit. Um, and, and in these sort of uh, geometry affine, you're doing affine transformations, and uh, you basically do that on a given correspondence feature set. So, um, and then the pyramid level ones, one I referenced earlier. So. We do have FastCV available for download on our developer.qualcom website right now. You can actually install a sample application. I think this is fairly uh, basic stuff for people that are familiar with uh, development on mobile handsets, given that this is the Android Builder Summit. This is uh, clearly not the best use of your time, but I wanted to make clear that we do have some detailed examples of how to basically link in our FastCV library into our sample application, which does fast corner detection and uses some of the functions within our library just as a, as a way to get people started. And so feel free to download it and, and give it a try and try it on your, on your actual uh, phone. It's uh, very easy to do. So um, just
just to give, go through some of the sample application code, if you were to look at the source code which we provide in that uh, downloadable uh, SDK, there is lots of code, but there's only very little FCD code, which shows you that a little goes a long way in this particular example. You've got set the operation mode, which is actually in here, like I was describing earlier. You've got, essentially, you align the uh, FASTCD align 128, you do that. And then essentially, at the bottom here, we're doing a color conversion from YUV to RGB, and then we do filter, uh, filter the image a little bit, and essentially then we do corner detection. And so, it's very, very small amounts of FASTCD code that you can include into an existing app and get some significant speed up in terms of performance. And uh, we've got commercial examples of people that have actually taken existing apps, refactored them to include FASTCD function calls where they had bottlenecks, and we've observed, you know, uh, north of 30% improvement in an individual app uh, just by basically, you know, removing essentially a bottleneck in their app and putting in another one. So, as Jenny Craig would say, results not typical, but uh, actually we think we can do a lot better uh, than just 30% with some more significant refactoring. So, uh, uh, I'll move along to how, this is probably an issue that's top of everybody's mind, if you have an actual existing CV application that you've developed or prototyped using OpenCV, it's not black or white, you use FastCV or OpenCV. You can actually profile your application that you prototyped it maybe uh, on, a, on a machine and seen some performance bottlenecks in, for example, color conversion or, or pick your, your area. And what you can do is actually essentially uh, replace that particular function call, link in our uh, with a FastCV function call, and you can do that by linking in essentially FastCV library to your application, calling the appropriate function, seeing for yourself if you actually get a demonstrable or relevant improvement, and we think that uh, you will see such. It's actually been a couple of good commercial examples that we've got that um, have done this, and uh, they've combine both OpenCV, FastCV, and some proprietary algorithms that they've, you know, uh, collected together to create their application and, and, and seen some good results by using FastCV. And so, as I promised, we wanted to basically make clear that, um, you know, there's value to both the FastCV for ARM as well as the FastCV for Snapdragon. And so, we normalize some of these performance results with OpenCV, and uh, I should be candid and say that these results are significantly out of, uh, out of date, like they're a couple months old, and we've significantly improved our, our performance since then. But even uh, two months ago, we actually, you know, you get the point. OpenCV, if you normalize all of these uh, results to one, you see that FastCV is generally a significant improvement over OpenCV on a mobile platform. And then if you actually use some of the actual Hardware, accelerator, hardware acceleration that's provided by FastCV for Snapdragon, you end up getting an even better performance. So I think it makes a compelling case for uh, using FastCV. And so I wanted to make clear an additional point that, that is very, very valuable in the mobile specific CV application development domain, and that's power. And so there are multiple ways in which you can actually uh, um, uh, sort of get a benefit from FastCV. One of them is in, in, in raw performance improvement, which was demonstrated on that previous table. But the, the second, and what we're using here, is essentially this green graph CPU frequency as a proxy for power consumption on the mobile device. And so if you have an algorithm that's basically running uh, for a long period of time, you can actually clock the, uh, the mobile processor very high, get it over with very fast, and then you actually reap the performance benefits of FastCV in that dimension, and then you finish your uh, algorithm quicker, and then you can shut it down. And so as you see this green line coming down, you basically realize the application finished that blue uh, task, and essentially you can down clock your CPU, saving power as a result. Um, and and that, that basically is it. There, there's additional benefits to shorter algorithms, and you can see that the dynamic uh, clock scaling essentially reaps you a significant power benefit by having something like FastCV in there. And so um, that, that was the, the main uh, point of this particular slide. And so I wanted to um, basically stop there and say thank you guys for listening. And